Welcome to our RSA interview series. These interviews are sponsored by Circadence. If you're looking for a gamified cybersecurity training platform, Circadence offers Project Ares, which is an absolutely mind-blowing cybersecurity training platform. And if you were looking for more information, please check out the link in the description below. Hey everyone, this is Zach with IT Career Questions and we're here at RSA and I'm with uh, James Stanger, who's uh, the evangelist for CompTIA. And we're gonna be talking a little bit about Linux. So thank you for being on the show with us today. Yeah, it's good to be here, man. It's good to be here. It's a busy booth, busy place to be. Yeah. So uh, have you been here for most of the, the, the uh, at, for most of yeah. the conference so far? Yeah, was, uh, well, my second day here, so. Yeah, yeah. second day conference, second day here. Yep. You know, it's been interesting to check out all of the different things uh, at the conference and yeah. what the, the different themes. Linux is definitely one of those things. Yeah, you've seen a lot of that here, for yeah, sure, absolutely. definitely. So if, what kinds of themes have you seen big time here at RSA? <laughs> you know, I haven't really got around much, but, you know, a lot of cloud security. Lately, a that, there, yeah. there's a lot of yeah. cloud security that I've seen. Um, and not being able to walk around a lot so far today, that's really been what I've seen the most of. Just based on the banners, there's a lot of cloud security. You, you know, know it's, they talk about cloud, and there's a lot of talk about the whole AI, you know, like we use machine yeah. learning. Have you seen that? They're, they're yeah. baking it in there. Oh, yeah, I think it, everywhere you look, you're going to see AI, uh, automation, yeah, uh, machine learning. I think if you. Uh, if you were to walk around here, you'd probably see that almost everywhere, I'm sure. You have, you, you have. And, and some of them you can tell they're kind of adding it on, is it real or whatever right. like that. So there's a lot about uh, automation, you know, Docker, mm -hmm. Kubernetes, all those, those yeah. sorts of things. And I think what's interesting about this is that when you see, when you start unconstructing or deconstructing a lot of these different things, I think Linux is at the center of all of them, or the foundation yeah. of a lot of oh, yeah. things. Definitely. I mean, well, Linux is everywhere. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, I, you know, the growth of Linux in the last few years has just been huge, huge. And it's funny because, you know, just a, a few months ago, I read an article about um, there's more Linux servers hosted on Azure than, than Windows. Yeah. So yeah. that yeah. just blows my mind. Yeah, the, general, de you know? the default way that you virtualize uh, Windows systems, for example, on Azure is you run a Linux system first, and then you run the Windows systems on top of that uh, host right. uh, OS. So it, it's a huge thing. The other thing I'm seeing is, as I take a look at a lot of the SIM tools that are out there, uh, as I take a look at a lot of the attack, the MITRE attack model is really big right now. They're talking about that. The, the, the Lockheed kill chain, the NIST thing as well. But as they talk about the, the different kill chain, I'm noticing that they're saying, oh, well, here's what you, the information you could give the blue team, or here's the information that you give the red team. And they're using those terms that just a couple of years ago really weren't as, as wide. And the reason I'm interested in that is if you're going to be a good pen tester, for example, you've got to have really good Linux skills. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And that's uh, you know an area that I've been pushing a lot on IT career questions is getting my viewers to understand why Linux is important and to understand where they can start learning it and where it's relevant within the field. So, you know, a lot of my viewers are interested in cybersecurity. So one of those areas, again, of course, is learning Linux. How can they utilize Linux to advance their careers in cybersecurity? So then you, you mentioned pen testing and of course, you That's might need to use Linux, of course, in a pen testing career. So yeah, can you right. tell me uh, how uh, CompTIA is helping uh, advance, you know, uh, oh, users yeah. with, uh, or people who are looking to advance their careers in cybersecurity with Linux? You bet. One of the things that we're doing is we've put together the Linux Plus certification, and that's something that's brand new. And what we've done is made sure that we focus it on right around the job roles that are really hot right now. So if you're supporting things, uh, fancy automation solutions like Docker and Kubernetes, then we've got that going for you. Right. But the thing that's really interesting is that we don't just have Linux in Linux Plus. We've got it in a lot of different areas. For example, at the help desk, more and more, help desk folks are being asked to support uh, cloud-based solutions, right. as well as uh, even do uh, relatively simple Linux tasks, such as uh, remounting hard disks or restarting services. All those things require a certain amount of Linux right. knowledge. 
So all the way through our pathway from A plus, network plus, security plus, Linux is a major part of that. Yeah, and you guys have a new Linux bus coming out this yeah, April. year. This yeah, April. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just next month. Just next month. Yeah. Wow. And so it's really it's exciting to see it because uh, we've got performance based items going in there, meaning that it's not just memorization stuff like you know what tool do you use to do X. It's not that. It's like you get a command prompt and then it's time to go to work and make a solution happen to fix a problem or whatever. So it's pretty it. That's it's awesome. Pretty interesting to check yeah, out. The, yeah, I you know I've seen lately that uh, CompTIA has been pushing you know performance based questions within Certmaster. Right. You know the Certmaster uh, Learn program, which is something that I've been using for my Security Plus. And that's something that's been absolutely amazing. So it's worked I've, out for you? What have you liked about it? it you, you know, the fact that they've introduced that, introduced performance-based you know, uh, scenarios yeah. into a learning platform to actually you know, help you understand that this is something that you might actually run across in the real world. Absolutely vital. You know, yeah. That's something that you don't necessarily see across the board. You don't see that everywhere. You, know? you, you don't see that in different learning platforms or uh, when you're doing, you know, going through a book, for instance, you know, you, you might not run across that. So having these performance-based questions, I think that's really that's clutch. I you mean, know, that's a very uh, important aspect in your learning. You I know? think it is. I like how you said that. It is a clutch. It, it is. Yeah. You know, thing. I'm probably going to steal that. That's fine. Go for right, it. Right. Absolutely, but do it. What I really think is interesting is that you know, we talk to a lot of people out there in the, uh, in the in the world every day. When I say we, it's not just James doing it. Uh, we talk to you know professionals such as Zach and many other people. People. So by the time we create whatever cert it is or whatever training program it is, we're crowdsourcing as it were thousands of people and we're bringing that wisdom in. And, and, and when I talk to hiring managers, I was just talking to one yesterday for a major retailer, big retailer, you've been there, trust me. And with this, I said, what are the skills that you really look for? And he said, look, James, I look for a desire to learn and I look for somebody who's truly immersed themselves in the technology. And, and that, the way he used that phrase, that truly immersed in technology, it goes to your point about going into the performance-based items. Right. Um, and that's why we made sure to include those, because we didn't have those before until the last few years. Yeah. And by including those things, we're actually allowing it, people to immerse themselves in these technologies. Because I like to see what, what you do at IT Questions, what you do, what we do at CompTIA, is that we're kind of like mentors, we're scalable mentors. And, and if we can give people those environments to play with the, the, the right technologies, Linux in this case, then we've all won. Yeah, you know, the, the great thing about CompTIA is, and as I've learned since working with CompTIA, is how you guys develop the certifications with job roles in mind, right? <laughs> and you, you you develop, you know, Linux Plus with job roles in mind, CompTIA, they're the A Plus with job roles in mind, right? So with these performance-based questions, you you develop these the, the, those questions with um, a specific scenario right. in mind, right? That somebody's actually going to run across, right? So Absolutely. you bring in these professionals who are developing, you know, these questions, right? That they've run across this actual scenario before in real life, so they know that that's right. They, they've experienced this, and when you're going through this, they're going to experience, you know, they might experience this as well. So now they're going to understand that, hey, yeah. this is something that. As I'm going through my career, I will, I can remember this, or I will uh, learn to maybe understand more, look into this more, and, and I think that's kind of a, a crucial aspect to um, also look into a little bit more and uh, understand and develop your skills. You know, with these with being performance based or just a scenario, right? Yeah, a scenario based, putting yourself in a scenario. That's what I really like about that. That's so. really cool. And, and what, what I've noticed, too, is that a lot of the hiring managers who are doing this and a lot of the SMEs who are, who are uh, helping us put together these items, the way the discussion works is, yeah, I've had to explain this a thousand times to people, or, or I've had to explain this a thousand times to subject matter experts. And they're like, if only somebody else could do that for us. And it's right. like, yeah, yeah, we, we can pick that up. You know? right. So it's not so much this you know, academic or theoretical kind of knowledge. It's, it's very pragmatic. Uh, sometimes it, it's a little scary. Sometimes, like I was, t you know, doing some of the A plus stuff, and I was like, "Oh man, I've got to <laughs> remember exactly how this is done." Right. So it's it's uh, it really grabs you. It's it's uh, relatively tough, but if you've got the knowledge and you've done hands-on type uh, knowledge, right. it's doable. It's not like we pick some arcane kind of weird right. thing that you have to learn. It doesn't work that way. Right. Right. So, uh, how else is is CompTIA um, helping evolve? Um, professionals in cybersecurity? 
You know, you guys are here at RSA, which is a huge cybersecurity oh, conference. <laughs> so, what is CompTIA doing here to help? you know, these professionals with cybersecurity. One of the things that we, we're doing uh, is, for example, I at uh, 2 o'clock tomorrow, I think it is, in the uh, afternoon, I'm doing a session with a guy named Tim Crothers. He works for Target. And, uh, well, he's the vice president of security for Target. And we're putting together a, a very hands-on kind of lab that focuses on ways that today's companies can come up with real metrics for success, not theoretical ones, not frameworks, but real specific metrics that show we've gotten uh, uh, progress. Other things that we do a lot, uh, we'll go, we've gone around the world now with various boot camps. And these mini boot camps that we do, we've held them at uh, various shows in Baltimore. We just got back from one, where, I'm trying to remember where it was. One was in Atlanta, uh, no it wasn't, it was in Augusta. And another one was just down in San Diego. And we make sure that we bring people in and we teach them hands-on, very hands-on specific skills. Right here at the booth, we're even doing a demo of a sin flood. And not only how is it uh, uh, conducted using uh, Kali Linux, you know, yeah, made, they made just exploit, that up there, got yeah. that. And yeah. then we we look at that, and then not only do we show how that's done, then we show how to fix that problem, and we show how to analyze it. You know, starting with just Wireshark, and then we show how you can uh, how Bro, you know, can identify some of those attacks. Great. So the whole idea is that um, to close that skills gap, you know, to really show people, we do a lot of hands-on kind of demos. That's really where it's at for us. Right. right now. And I think CompT is doing a fantastic job of helping close many skill gaps with. The, the certifications that you know you guys are releasing now, you know the way that you guys are developing them now, uh, the the material that you guys are putting on them, you know the new A plus that was just released. I mean, with putting more cybersecurity on there, way automation way on there, scripting. The fact that <laughs> scripting was putting was put on there. That's that, so cool. That I know. I, I mean, that kind of blew me away. I was like, that is one of the coolest things. I think there was added to that. I mean, that's just phenomenal to see that on there. It's really neat. And you know, folks, if, if scripting intimidates you, don't worry too much about it. Get a hold of you know, a Windows system. Get a hold of a Linux system. Create a simple shell script. If you're on a Linux system, mm -hmm. you get something called the shebang going. Yeah, right? All you have to do yeah. is just uh, mm -hmm. Google what that means and create a little ho hello world script as your yeah. first one. It's a great way to get things started. Yeah. And you'll, you'll find very quickly you'll get into that groove. So just an example. Yeah, I mean, I still use uh, like batch files for things. Okay. I'm on my home computer just for, for random things, you know what I mean? And it's easy to do, you know, it's easy to do. It's not intimidating uh, and it's still used in enterprises on a day-to-day -day basis. And I, I don't I don't want anybody to feel like that's intimidating at all. Uh, it's something that you, you, know, you can right click on and edit and look at it and, and within a few seconds, you should be able to understand it. And it, it's not gonna take a rocket scientist to figure no, it out. This you don't need to be a programmer. Yeah. To, to look at it and figure out what's going on with it. It's, you just have to know, yeah, you just have to know what's, on, what's going on yeah. underneath the hood of yeah. some of those things. And it's fun to see that because what we'll do is we, we've added you know scripting into uh, A+, plus, for example, because automation is a major part of that, yeah. that job role. Yeah. And what, we're noti what I'm noticing here at RSA, there is a lot of talk about automating certain tasks. And I think one of the things people worry about, whether it, become, whether it has to do with Linux security or whether it has to do with security or even A plus, is will my job get replaced by right. some sort of automated thing? And I've asked that question uh, in as clever ways as I can come up with right. to people to get them to say, oh yeah, all these jobs are going away. And it's interesting, even the most jaded of them is like, look, there are certain tasks that will that are very repetitive, they'll go away. They'll get automated. Mm -hmm. But we need people with good judgment. We need right. people to, when it comes to creating those scripts, for example, right. to create them well and to manage them. So we need uh, decision makers still, and by still, for the next many years. So uh, right. there's a lot of opportunity yeah. out there. And, and I just talked about this the other day, where um, there will be jobs that might be replaced, or oh, sure. job uh, duties that will be replaced by automation, but you know, we'll learn to pivot, you know, just like with the auto industry, like, you know, That's right. It was automated back in the early what, 1900s, or you know, and, and were, we yeah. learned to pivot from that. We learned to find new ways to uh, manufacture things differently and, and find new jobs uh, along the way. Um, but with IT, it's always evolving. We're always building new technologies, um, and there's always something to do. There's always something happening. So as long as you're constantly learning and understanding how to adapt and pivot yourself, 
you'll always be needed. You'll always find a, a place, I feel like. I, I don't know how you feel no, about that's that. That's exactly how I feel. There's a leftward drift, you could call it, or, or a northward shift, whatever you want to say. In other words, a lot of tier one jobs could get uh, uh, replaced, as it were, right? But that doesn't mean that those tier one people just go away into the ether, right. as it were. But, um, <laughs> but what they do is they get upskilled. Right. And and the ones that you want to keep are the ones that have that desire to be upskilled. I was talking right. to a guy uh, who works for a major bank, and he was saying they've kind of studied a lot of job roles, and a lot of people were doing almost eight hours of repetitive work and four, about about forty five minutes of work that met, that that made sense. And he said the goal was not to replace those workers; it was simply to replace the non productive work with automation. He said we we want to use these things as as uh, automation. Uh, whether it be you know through Docker or what have you, as a force multiplier rather than a force replacer, and right. so there's a real opportunity out there for people who get those right skills. Right now, you brought up like entry level or you know uh, tier one jobs. Yeah. Now, I I feel personally that there will always be a need for tier one jobs or help desk jobs. You'll always oh, need yes, some type of support jobs, yes. for your you know end user. You know, you're always going to need support for your one-on-one -on -one with people. You know, your your biggest support is with dealing with people, right? That's right. You yeah. know, you're, yeah, no, those the jobs won't, you know, all go away. Right. Absolutely not. I okay. Agree. And yeah. here's the other thing: is that uh, there are entry-level jobs out there. It's not like you're going to be working for AI, or, or there, there right. won't be that first tier. It's just that uh, even that first level job, the step just might be a bit higher in terms right. of the knowledge that you need to yeah, get, right. have to get it. Yeah, and that's where I think the, the new A-plus came in, and, and they really that. improved. I mean, they really kind of um, made that the, the skills that um, I think were required there. Not, I don't want to say much higher, and not because I don't want to make it intimidating. No, I don't want to sound intimidating because it's, it's not. Different. It's just different. It, yeah, it's, it's different. A different focus. It, it used to be very hardware, right? And right. Very, uh, yeah. You know, like Windows, right? That yeah. was the way. Windows, yeah. That was the mo of A plus for so long. So right. that division is gone now, and we have yeah. much more IoT sort of oriented, right. um, and a much more diverse set of platforms yeah. to, to uh, support. Yeah, I, but um, yeah, with that A plus, I, I like I said that the, the skills that they put on there, I mean. They really relate to these new, or to the to the entry level jobs that are out there right now. In a big and way. if you look right now on Indeed.com, there's six thousand, seven thousand jobs that are looking that for are people going. with the A plus certification. Right. So know, we've seen, yeah, we've seen more automation than ever before in this industry, and yet there are more tech support jobs at the level you're talking yeah. about now, and there will be. It's yeah. projected to be one of the top growth yeah. areas. So if you're looking to do that kind of career switch. If you're looking to move up in that world, uh, there's there's plenty of opportunity there. Yeah. Just to, it depends on your kind of desire to want to do it and, and to, to make the time to learn these things. Yeah, and I think a lot of people honestly get kind of uh, maybe uh, uh, intimidated or pushed back or mm -hmm. maybe don't want to start off at entry level, right? And they say, I don't, I don't want to start off at entry level. I don't want to do that. But in reality, that's the best way to get experience and get yourself into the field, right? Mm -hmm. And from there, once you understand how an enterprise works, you understand how other technologies work, you can expand your career from there. You can build your base and grow and go into the area that you want to. But really, starting out at entry level, you're gonna you're gonna expand, you're gonna grow, but you have to start there to really kind of take off, and, and it really helps a ton. And you need that foundation, you know. Yeah. It, it, I, I was talking to a guy who uh, is responsible. Uh, in the UK for the, uh, what is it, uh, I want to say the nuclear plays, the nuclear power plants throughout the UK, and he's responsible for securing a lot of that infrastructure out there. And I said, you know, what are the kind of skills that you are looking for? And he said, our biggest problem is people who don't have the foundational knowledge that, that you can get from a help desk situation. The foundational knowledge meaning of, of hardware, of networking, of right. how software works, how search, databases, all those things. So many people, they go stamp, want to go stampeding into uh, networkingville or into right. security or, oh, I'm a cloud guy. It's like, hold on, let's get those, uh, fundamentals. those fundamentals. Yeah. And it's at the help desk where you're going to learn all this, yep. a lot of those things. Yeah, that's a big area that I constantly push. And CompTIA really, I think, just comes in strong there and really helps lay that, that foundation really well. And that's why I'm a huge advocate for CompTIA and really love what you guys do.
Thanks. It's fantastic uh, to, to be here. Fantastic, Jim. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And uh, face to face, finally. Yeah, right. You know? right absolutely. And uh, let's do some more stuff. Yeah, I would love to. I'd love to do that. Absolutely, sir. Take care, so, everyone. Yeah, thank you very much.